Howdy friends, let's talk tattoos. For the past four or so years of my life, I have been gathering a tidy little collection of tattoos. Let's talk about the tattoos that I've gotten. Let's talk about how painful they were and let's talk about if I regret any of them. It's tattoo tour time, yeah! People have been requesting this for a while and I'm finally doing it. I'm gonna start in chronological order. So I'm gonna start with my first tattoo and then work my way to my most current tattoo, which arguably might be my most controversial. First up, I have three dots behind my ear. I've talked about this before. I made a whole YouTube video, like pranking my parents about getting a tattoo. And then it was quite literally the tiniest tattoo that someone could get. It's three dots behind my ear, ellipses. It, I barely remember getting it. It also barely remembers being on me because it's basically just one smudgy dot now. Do not recommend. Also, I have sensory issues when it comes to things being really loud near my ear. I think most human beings do. So weirdly, this tattoo was painful in more of a generally uncomfortable kind of way and less of a needle on my skull kind of way. So I would give it like a 1.5 out of 10 for pain. That's number one. Also, another thing is that this was done at the Purple Panther. I think that's what it's called. I have to let you know, getting your first tattoo done in a very traditional male dominated space, like one of those tattoo parlors that you would see in the middle of Hollywood, it's a very interesting experience. And I think there is a very good reason why this was my one and only that I got done at a place like that. Fast forward, I think six years, I got my second tattoo, which I consider my first like real tattoo because I took the time to see what I wanted. I searched out an artist that I was really excited about. I booked the tattoo like a month in advance. So I feel like I really kind of sat with this tattoo. And it's my Rathew tattoo. I call him Rathew, Rat Matthew. Don't ask me why. This was done by Jessica Rubbish, who is the rat priestess. And I fucking love her. She was such a good experience for having not had any tattoos. She didn't judge me at all. She's covered in tattoos. And I felt immediately at ease and so comfortable with her. I will tell you though, this being my first tattoo, I thought like, oh, arm tattoos. Everyone gets arms tattoos. How painful could it possibly be? This was easily one of my most painful tattoos. I have very sensitive skin and especially your inner arm is very, very sensitive skin. It felt like hot coals and kitty cat claws and all of the things all wrapped into one. I would say on a pain scale of one to 10, a seven and a half. I sweat through three layers of clothes. I think one thing that I'm really appreciative of when it came to my tattoo journey is that I grew up in a time where it was a very male dominated field and it was a very uh, get this tattoo the way I want it or you don't get a tattoo at all kind of vibe from a lot of tattoo artists that I talked to. And I don't know if it was COVID or just like the general atmosphere. But I feel like a lot of femme presenting artists got kind of fed up with that concept. And so there became this huge wave of illustrators and graphic designers and just traditional artists who started taking on tattooing as a side gig and then realized like, holy shit, not only do I get to do the thing that I love, but I make better money and I don't have to work for like big corporations making logos. I can make gorgeous tattoos for people to enjoy all over the world. So weirdly, I think across my body, every single tattoo artist, maybe save for one of them, was an illustrator or a graphic designer before they started tattooing, which I think is really fucking cool. I love my patchwork tattoos. People have very big opinions about the style of tattoo that you get, but honestly, fuck them. Get whatever the fuck you want, okay? People are gonna judge you regardless of what kind of tattoo you have, so you might as well get the one that you like looking at every single day, right? Anyways, so that's how I landed with my first tattoo, Rathew. I'm obsessed with him. I still think to this day, this is maybe my favorite tattoo, which is so crazy because I was really worried I would get sick of it. Absolutely not. I wanna go get 15 more Rathews. So Jessica, if you're ever around, 
Save me a spot, please. Oh, by the way, this one, Rathew, was machine. For my second tattoo, I really, really wanted to try stick and poke because I had heard a lot about it. I had now had a machine tattoo. So I wanted to stick and poke just to see what the real difference was between the two. So I booked in with Pokio Pokey. Um, I'm gonna say all their Instagrams, by the way, because I feel like that's the easiest way for you guys to be able to find them. But I booked in with them and I actually had my own custom design ready to go. I really wanted to get a worm tattoo like a graphic worm popping out of a hole and I had drawn it a few times uh, over the course of a couple months and I had landed on a design that I really liked and the interesting thing is not a lot of tattoo artists like when you bring in custom designs or if they do if they're okay with that they usually charge a little bit more Pokio was so sweet and was like, yeah, sure. I don't care. Bring in your worm tattoo. I'll do it. I'll do it so well. And she did. I'm obsessed with my worm. Um, I call Will worm. So that's part of it too. Wormy, squirmy, squum. So it was kind of a couple tattoo, but also I just love the way it looked. I don't know. This is the tattoo I feel like most people mention. People are always like, is that a worm? One person thought it was a dick and I was like, you're trying to see a dick in this worm. This is a Rorschach test and you failed. My third tattoo, okay, we're gonna have to hike up this skirt for a second, okay? My third tattoo is this kitty cat tattoo. This was done by Chop Stick and Poke, Georgie. I'm obsessed with Georgie. You will see that Georgie has done another tattoo for me. She is the sweetest. She is so wonderful, such a good chat. And the funny thing about this tattoo, oh wait, I should have said pain for this one. This one didn't hurt at all, by the way. This tattoo was not bad. I think, first of all, hand poke is just less painful than machine to me personally. I think most people find that. It's a little bit longer, so it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. But I would say this one was probably a four out of 10 on the pain scale. This guy was painful, okay? And I think I know why it was painful, but this is a kitty cat that Georgie did. I'm obsessed with it. It's lounging, it's got a lotus leaf on, or maybe a ginkgo leaf on top of its head, obsessed. It was an incredibly painful tattoo, which I wasn't expecting, but I know why it was painful, okay? First of all, it was hand poke, so you would think, like I said earlier, that it wouldn't be so bad because my other one wasn't so bad. So I was like, this isn't even gonna be painful. It's not gonna be like wrath you. It'll be like my worm, it'll be totally fine. I did not realize until like halfway through the tattoo that I had started my period. And as you know, your nerves get a little bit more sensitive when you're on your period. So I was getting a tattoo while I was on day one of my period and I was like, oh my God, I am so sore after this. Um, but it was a really good experience because I got to chat with Georgie the whole time. So that made it way less painful. So I would say that in total though, it was probably a 7.5 out of 10 on the pain scale. Like it was pretty painful. It wasn't terrible but it was pretty painful. Next up, let me think who was the next one. I think actually it was my ankle tattoo. So I have a little, bleh, I have a little flower on my ankle. I got super bored during lockdown. This is like at the beginning of COVID times. I got really, really bored and I wanted a new tattoo, okay? Like millions of other bored tattoo enthusiasts. I went on Etsy and bought a tattooing kit. I'm not saying that you should do that. I'm just saying that it was a fun way to spend my Saturday, okay? I taught myself how to do stick and pokes. I was very sanitary and I wanted just like a pretty kind of SpongeBob flower, inspired flower. And here's the kicker. It was so painless and it took me so little time. And it's now one of my favorite tattoos. I, like on a pain scale, it was barely a one. Like it was not painful. And it, it was a little scary because after I finished it, I was like, oh shit, I could do this a lot and I'm not going to. So I did my one tattoo and I was done. I also tattooed a friend, but I think that one was a little bit more painful. <laughs> so tattoo artist at Arden Rose on Instagram. If you have seen this tattoo artist before, um, Slime Lad was actually my first male tattoo artist that I'd had. 
Um, the rest of my tattoos were all femme presenting people, which was very interesting. But I loved Slime Lad's tattoo style so much. Oscar is so sweet as well, like what a wonderful man. He made me tea right before we went in. We had a great time. He was the first tattoo artist to use a remote machine tattoo gun on me. So it literally writes like a pen. It's so crazy and, and like so efficient. And although it was pretty painful, it's a lot bigger of a tattoo than most of my other ones. Like I would say that this one and Rathu were my biggest tattoos. I think it was probably a seven on the pain scale, but talking to Oscar the whole time made it a lot better. And um, yeah, it's still one of my favorites to this day. Also, I'm really happy because when I went to go talk to him about how big I wanted the tattoo and everything, he was like, you could have this a little bit smaller, but you're gonna lose some detail. I would do it a little bit bigger. And I went with it. I was like, yes, that sounds good. Let's do it a little bigger. And now I'm so glad it is the size that it is. I feel like it really is like a statement piece on my arm. I love it. This tattoo, which says you are Lisa Simpson. This is a Simpsons reference. I got this one about two years ago now and I love this tattoo. I looked down at it, it's one of my favorites. If you like the Simpsons, like I have this philosophy that everyone needs at least one cartoon reference tattoo and I really, really wanted to get a Simpsons tattoo. So, and Will really wants one too. He's like, maybe my first tattoo will be like a bad Simpsons tattoo and I'm like, Go for it, man. I love that. Get a shitty Bart, like farting on your butt or whatever. I don't know. I think it's cool. Anyways, I decided to get this one because it's my favorite Simpsons episode. Lisa Simpson gets a substitute teacher who's like wonderful and such a boon for her education. And at the very end of the episode, he has to leave because he's a substitute teacher. She says like, what am I going to do without you? Like, how am I going to survive? And he's like, here, and gives her a note and is like, this is all you'll need. And when she opens the note, it says, you are Lisa Simpson. Like you have everything you need to be successful. And I love that. So I put you are Lisa Simpson on my arm. Even though I probably should have put you are Arden Ricks, but whatever. It's the thought that counts. So that was also done by Georgie. This one was not painful at all. I was surprised. I thought like forearm would be sensitive. Also, it's a little bit bigger. But once again, I think because I was chatting with Georgie, I was having such a good time that I would say it was maybe a four, maybe a five on the pain scale. Let's give it a 4.5. Not too shabby. Next up, I got tattooed by Kim here in LA. She is also an incredible mixed media artist, like graphic designer, illustrator, does really, really, really cool artwork. Like she blends a lot of cartoony stuff and then also very like lots of realism. So I would love to go back and get another tattoo from her that was done with more of a realistic style, which I don't have any tattoos like that. So I think it'd be kind of fun and a little bit different. The thing that I loved is that on her flash sheet, she had a clothesline. And I just love the idea of having a clothesline on my arm. And then at the time we had just gotten Primrose. So I was so excited to get a pet tattoo. So Primrose is down in the bottom of the tattoo, chilling out. I'm realizing now, I need to hit her up again and be like, hey, do you think you could put Calcifer on here too? But I think it would be so funny if Calcifer was walking across the top of the tattoo because he's the adventurer. Primrose is more of the chill cat. So I think it'd be a cute little vignette. I can't remember if this one was machine or hand poke. I think it might've been machine, but this one was probably like a five out of 10. It wasn't that painful. Now it's time for maybe one of my most controversial tattoos. Okay, I have two. My final two sets of tattoos are probably my most controversial. Um, my second to last tattoo was my face tattoos. Yes, if you haven't already figured it out, I did in fact get face tattoos. I got freckles done on my face. I don't know if you can see them because I feel like this camera is like blurring all my skin and making it look so beautiful. Um, but as you can see, like all through here, I've got little brown dots across my nose. Some people might refer to them as freckles. Crazy. This was done by Yasa Tattoos in Costa Mesa, I think. And I'm obsessed with them. 
Okay, obsessed. I got them done in January. They looked insane the first week that I had them because they were so dark and so vibrant. And as they faded, they have easily become one of my favorite tattoos on my body. I will be getting them redone when they fade. I just think they're so good. They make you look sun-kissed all the time, even if you're pale as shit like me and you never step foot in the sun. So obsessed, absolutely obsessed. I actually wish that I had gotten more because some of them fell out. So yeah, can you even see? Can you see the schnoz tattoos? Schnozzing it up. I'm obsessed with them. On a pain scale, they were <laughs> maybe a two. It was such a painless tattoo. I highly recommend them. To anyone who's considering this, do it. You will not regret it, I'm telling you. And to answer the question, do I regret my face tattoos? Absolutely fucking not. And you know, I do not. I would go get more. I would go get more freckles everywhere. It's awesome. For around Valentine's Day, around Will's birthday, I got some people tattoos from Dima. And if you've ever seen these on Instagram before, um, they, I feel like they go viral quite a bit, but they're tattoos of little people. So this one on my left arm is a person either falling or finishing a cartwheel. It's kind of up to your own artistic interpretation. I think she's finishing a cartwheel. That's because I'm an optimist. On a, on a low day, maybe I think she's falling over, who knows. My other set right here are three people traveling together. Um, there's a pair over here that look like me and Will because I wanted to get kind of a couple tattoo. And then this third girl is just there for reference and to kind of set the scene for the rest of the tattoo. Rules of three and whatnot. Okay, I got this tattoo from Katya right before I got my Dima tattoos. I might've gotten this and then my freckles. I'm genuinely not sure anymore. I'm not sure. Obsessed with this tattoo. It's just a little chain of like gingerbread men cats. I love them so much. It was a flash tat. It was done with machine and I think it's beautiful. I love it so much. It was not very painful. I think this one was probably, probably like a five out of 10 on the pain scale. And then the Dima people were probably a six. Weirdly, I think it was just because this area right here was very sensitive and he went over the areas a lot. And I'm not mad about that. I'm, I'm very happy. He was very, very thorough and Dima was lovely. And so was Katya. Both of them were so amazing and they work at the same studio. So say hi if you ever go. That's my tattoo tour. Woo! We finally made it through everybody. Woo! I'm still looking to get more. I always am. I don't have any torso tattoos. I also don't have any back tattoos. So I would consider getting tattoos there. I don't know, there's a thought, there's a feeling that I might. If you like any of the styles of tattoos, feel free to go follow the tattoo artists. I'm gonna put all of their ads on Instagram. If I can find anywhere else, I'll link their websites or whatever in my description box. I almost forgot to say that I officially tag one Connie Franny to do his own little tattoo tour because I want to see those gams, baby. Get them out, spread them. That's right, we're going old school YouTube. Tag, you're it, Connie. Thank you again to all of the wonderful artists that have blessed my body with their artwork. I regret absolutely none of them. The one thing I will say to kind of cap this whole video off is that I am glad that I waited until I was a little bit older to look into all these tattoos, just because I think like your taste develops so much and your brain develops so much from when you're like 16 to 25. So I would say like write down your tattoo ideas and then mull them over. I wanted a big old YouTube play button at one point on my hand and that would make me infinitely sad if I had that tattoo now. So <laughs> just saying, maybe take some time to think about each of them. Even if it's just booking a tattoo like a month in advance or two months in advance and then sitting with it. That's about it guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, let me know down in the comments below what your favorite tattoo is slash if you have tattoos, where the most painful part of your body you've gotten a tattoo has been. I'm just curious. I've heard sternum's really bad. I've heard hips can be really bad. Uh, I got a taste of that with my cat tattoo, but it was definitely not on my full hip. So just let me know, I'm really curious. Um, and I'll see you guys for the next video. Bye everyone.